The fact that sometimes all you need to get a good buzz is some hot, wet air, well, that is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. You're being very invasive right now. Now, the goal of every living thing is to get as much energy for yourself as you can. That's why the trees get bigger. That's why your dog is fat. That's why McDonald's is a multi-billion dollar company. And as humans, we've taken that to a new level because not only do we use energy as in the form of food to power ourselves, but we use energy to power everything in the world around us. We use energy to build. We use energy to travel. We use energy to communicate. We use energy to keep the lights on. And humanity has spent the majority majority of its time figuring out how to get enough energy to satisfy those demands. Because after all, it's not like you can just pull electricity out of thin air. Or can you? New research has demonstrated that we can pull electricity out of water molecules in the air. It turns out humidity might be good for something other than swass. But how could that happen? Because after all, humidity seems to be like the anti-electricity. I know I sure as hell get a lot more static shocks on those dry winter days than I do on these humid summer nights. But that's actually the reason why. Every time atoms and molecules rub up against each other, it creates a charge. When the air is dry and those molecules happen to be part of your socks and carpet, that charge sticks to you till you discharge it into your dog or doorknob. But when there's humidity in the air, those water molecules absorb that charge and dissipate it over a larger area, making it safer to pat your pet. But it's not just you. The water molecules do this to themselves. As they brush against each other as the air moves, they also build up their own static charge. That is quite literally how lightning happens. Just a bunch of water molecules bouncing off of each other until things get lit. So lit it can send a DeLorean back to the future. But how do you harness that energy? Well, it's complicated, but it turns out there is a few ways. The simplest way is just running humid air through two sheets of metal. There's actually a steam conductor that discovered this back in the 1800s when steam passing through two of his metal control levers arced between each other. Recently, more scientific methods of achieving that same result have been done in a lab and have had success. However, that method requires a lot of surface area and a minimum of 60% humidity, which is a lot and not super consistent. And that makes that method even remotely feasible only in certain geographic regions. But other researchers have found potentially more efficient ways to eke out those electrons. For example, researchers in Portugal have made zirconium oxide discs. These discs are porous, absorbing some of the humidity in the air while the majority of the water molecules in the air flow over the outside. This creates an electrical charge that according to them generates 1.5 volts. And they've demonstrated hooking a couple of them together can power an LED light. Now they have not published or had their research peer-reviewed yet, so at this point, that's just cool claims. And until that does happen, there's other potentially promising avenues as well. Researchers at the University of Massachusetts in 2020 used tiny protein nanowires produced by bacteria that actually generated an electrical charge out of the humidity in the air. These protein nanowires appear to operate in the same way. They absorb small amounts of water molecules while allowing larger volumes to flow over their surface, creating an electrical charge. Since then, they've built that same nanopore structure out of a variety of materials and gotten similar results regardless of the type of material used, showing that this porous structure is what is important in generating a charge. And what makes this even more exciting is these particular structures have been shown to generate electricity down to 20% humidity, which means they can be used to generate electricity pretty much anywhere in the world at any time of day. And that's really cool because it's completely green, renewable energy that doesn't require the sun, doesn't require the wind, it doesn't really require massive infrastructure. So does that mean that you'll have a humidity-powered house before too long? Well, sadly, that's a lot less likely. The amount of electricity that can be drawn from this process is pretty low. Now, you can tie a bunch of these devices together and increase their voltage and their power, but it's probably never going to be enough to power a car or sukasa. But while their power may be small, their potential is still pretty big because they do have the potential to provide enough power for many computers and wearable devices and lights, which of course don't seem like they use a lot of energy, but we have a lot of them. So many of them, in fact, that according to the International Energy Agency, agency, small network connected devices alone will waste just well in rest mode and not being used $120 billion of energy per year globally. That's a lot of wasted watts. And as energy infrastructure continues to struggle to keep up with constantly growing demand and all of the ways that we produce that energy have some negative environmental impacts, humidity powered hardware could be an important piece in the puzzle of solving our energy problems. And being that it can possibly produce consistent power 24 seven, it also has the potential potential to reduce our demand for batteries, which could also have some incredibly positive environmental and economic impacts. And the fact that wafting water may be a workable way to wane our ways of wasting wattage, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.